to address the society. It's a joy to be with you here on this very, very special day. It's a special day for the university. It's a special day for the people of Ireland too. We take great pride that north, south, east and west, we give, as uh, your provost so wonderfully said as we came, we give the very best of our students to this university. And to be here in this magnificent, absolutely magnificent college, to officially launch the Cambridge University Ireland Society, well, that is a particular joy. Every day should start, should it not, with music like that. I don't think we'd ever have had a bad temper day between these islands and we'd all go home every morning to music like that, to have our hearts lifted. Um, Madam Provost, do you, do you as a lawyer will know that um, in the law of contract, it's increasingly the case that between offer and acceptance, people sometimes are given a period of grace to change their minds. So I want to put um, all my cards on the table this morning um, as uh, the person who has been um, invited and who has accepted to undertake the patronage of this wonderful new association. On Easter Saturday, I was at Henley. <laughs> Do you know what happens in Henley? Do you know what happens on Easter Saturday in Henley? You do. Well, there are two universities on the river, right? There's this university and AM Other University. And I have to confess, I was cheering for the other university. Now, having said that, I have to plead, you know, a family connection with a certain person in the boat. Um, and, but I also say in my defence that knowing um, the extraordinary effort put in by all those young people, I came away, although the other university won, um, I have to say I came away with a huge respect for the young women in the other boat also, knowing how much effort they put in and how they were beaten just by that tiny, tiny canvas. So, are we still on? <laughs> we are. Well, I have to say that is incredibly ecumenical of you. And um, very much in the spirit of what we're trying to achieve and what you are trying to achieve through this society. Um, here in this great hall, I think it would be very easy, would it not, to allow your mind to wander back to the past. Uh, you see this magnificent place uh, going right back to um, a young and very ambitious Henry VI, and not only an ambitious man who wanted the very best and the most beautiful of colleges to be built here, but who also had a gras, we can say a heart, a cream in Ireland for, for those from poorer backgrounds, a man who wanted this college to be a place that would embrace poorer students. Um, and also a man who could um, undertake a task knowing that perhaps he might not live to see it to completion, and nor did he, his own generous vision, of course. He didn't live to foresee, he didn't live to see, but he, he worked to foresee and to create. And today we're a generation who gather with a um, really very deep and strong focus, a profound focus on the future. And it gathers here to imprint, to put its own specific particularity, its own character, its own imprint on the history of Cambridge, to offer its vision, its values, its gift of culture, its gift of music, its gift of all those things, of literature, of language, to offer all those things in the special imprint of this new, very confident and remarkable generation that comes from
from Ireland that now puts its talents at the service of this great university, just as this great university puts its genius at the service of their talents. And this society, this new society, is the gift of that very confident generation. Wonderful young Irish men and women, proud of their identity and heritage, proud of their culture, anxious to share it with their alma mater, to honour that wonderful great Irish tradition of community, which is and has been a feature, a feature of Irish life over so many generations, that wherever the Irish go, they form themselves into these, these groups, these associations that outreach to one another and create and recreate family and community and embrace for one another, but leave the doors open as a welcome to all, people of all backgrounds, perspectives, identities, rich in the knowledge that where cultures meet, there is a tremendous opportunity for confluence, for sharing, for enriching one another. I know that it is in this magnificent hall it probably has to be the most magnificent hall in which the Irish language is spoken. You meet for weekly Cora, Asquega, Calfibin and Don and Shaku, Trichin Changa Dulgasak, Gambato Leshin and Arch Brechin on Grey Changa, Atha, Atha, Akula, Huntatnov, Aguinchas Lorch Lakela, Asquega. So you meet here every week to discuss an Irish show, solving the world's problems. Uh, in this magnificent place, no regard to uh, place of birth or indeed proficiency of the language, just giving people an opportunity to enjoy chatting together in one of the world's ancient and beautiful languages. Uh, and of course, this very young society, as we've heard from the Provost, has already made a considerable mark on university life. It has a broad vision. It has an ambition to promote the cultures of Ireland the many diverse strands of Ireland, through its languages, literature, visual arts, its music, performing arts, sports, all of those things, to draw them all together, to offer them as that extraordinary gift of experience and fun and friendship, but in a respectful spirit of inclusiveness and an encouragement of a spirit of mutual understanding that has been so long elusive on our island of Ireland, but is so greatly needed. And we're a very privileged people to be living through times where the temper of relationship between islands, two neighbouring islands, not always terribly neighbourly, uh, historically, but thankfully we live through times when the discourse and the relationships have never been happier, better, friendly, more harmonious, more partnership driven, more respect driven, and that's a wonderful backdrop to what you are doing, and indeed you are part of ensuring that that continues unabated for the future and grows into the full fulfilment of the potential for true friendship between the two islands. Cambridge, I know, has its own tremendous litany of distinguished Irish graduates down through the centuries, not least on